Hey everyone! Okay, so today I just wanted to talk briefly about what pretty much everyone in the media is discussing right now, and that is Harvey Weinstein. I specifically want to touch on why it took so long for people to figure out what was going on, or rather, to admit what was going on. So if you don't know somehow, more than 25 women have now accused Harvey Weinstein of harassment or assault over a 20-year period. And no, this is not some crazy feminist accusation campaign like we've seen before, there are actual recordings of him admitting to his actions of groping women without their consent and pressuring them, and it's just a disgusting, weird incident overall. And what makes it more strange is that it really seems like this is something that was hidden within plain sight. Actors were literally joking about this at the Oscars, and they even had episodes of 30 Rock where they mentioned him being a predator multiple times. I turned down intercourse with Harvey Weinstein on no less than three occasions. It's now coming out that top figures and organizations knew about his behavior for a long while, yet none of them blew the whistle until now. So to fully understand the scale of this, consider the fact that it literally took hundreds of people being complicit, huge amounts of cash settlements, and serious legal threats and agreements to keep people quiet for all these years. And you'd think that maybe these things would hold this off for a year, or maybe two, and it wouldn't get out for that period. But eventually, someone would speak out. But no, they managed to keep this going on for decades. So how did they do it? What is the reason? Well, I think there are a few things to go over here, but first things first, I'd say that this is a rule that applies to almost every industry in the public eye, and it's one of the biggest factors in why things we call conspiracies are able to happen. And that is the fact that it's better to be wrong too late than to be right too early. So essentially the idea is that the first people to speak up about an issue tend to be left beaten and bloodied in the corner by the media or the insiders they spoke about and they're forgotten about essentially because they were right too early. They were called conspiracy theorists, their careers were discredited, and they were kicked out of their industry for betraying it. And they rarely ever even get credit later for being the first to speak up. Even when they are vindicated, people just forget about them. They are the forgotten vanguards that pushed the Overton window, i.e. the window of what's acceptable to discuss, and they pushed it just enough that maybe one day, eventually, the issue they discussed will be popular enough to speak about, but not enough for them to be taken seriously at that time. And it's only after those vanguards come out and put their head on the chopping block that the more careful and calculated people with more pull and fame and ability to reach out to others will speak out. Those who have retained their public respect by never being the first, later will talk about the issue. It's a broken system, but it's the one we live in, and it's one that applies to everything. In the political world, there's a reason you'll never see someone on Fox News push the Overton window. They wait to see the impact it has on others the canary in the coal mine, so to speak. Those of us in political commentary on the internet kind of see it as the Tommy Lauren effect. She'll speak out about an issue or use a term like snowflake months after it has been popularized by internet commentators because at that point, it's safe to discuss. And then a lot more people tend to follow her afterwards that are even more careful. And maybe sometimes the first people that spoke out will be vindicated and everyone will say they did a great job, but in most cases they're just left bloodied in the corner with their reputation tarnished and without a job, while those in the mainstream that are now speaking up about it get the praise. It's, I'd say, kind of like the bystander effect, I guess. If you don't know what it is, it's a very scary and fascinating trend of human behavior observed by psychologists, wherein people are less likely to intervene or help someone who is the victim of a crime if there are other people standing and watching. In fact, the more people there are, the less likely they are to help, because it's a combination of thinking someone else will do it first, and also feeling pressure from everyone else that isn't doing anything or isn't saying anything. People are very impacted by the behaviors of others and what is seen as socially acceptable. So when tons of people in Hollywood know about Harvey Weinstein and no one is speaking up, 
well, you're not going to feel very much like speaking up yourself in that case, are you? And you certainly won't feel safe or secure doing it. You'll always be thinking at the back of your head, there must be a pretty damn good reason that no one else is saying anything despite knowing the same things I know. If anyone has seen that new Tom Cruise movie, American Made, you probably have a lot of the same questions you did in the Weinstein case. How in the hell did all this drug smuggling into America go on with the American government? government involvement in it when there were so many hundreds of people, thousands probably, that knew about what was going on. How were so many people kept quiet for so long? Well, it's as simple as very powerful people can get away with a lot if they have the right motivation, like staying out of jail, keeping their job, or maintaining their high regard in public opinion, or one of the biggest ones, I think, making money. I think the average person has a lot of trouble understanding or processing these large scandals because they don't see themselves ever doing something like that. They don't understand how a human being could be so awful. But the reality is there are a lot of terrible, horrible people out there. And Weinstein happens to be one of them. One of them who was very well connected. He was tied at the hip with the Democratic Party raising millions for Obama and Hillary Clinton, which solidified quite the favor with them. He had serious pull with Hollywood. In fact, a survey of nearly 1,400 Oscar acceptance speeches found that Weinstein was thanked more often than God. So there you have it, a mix of political Hollywood and mainstream media power combined with collective silence meant that Harvey got away with 20 years of sexual abuse. And I don't know if you guys know about this case, but there are seriously worrying similarities to the Jimmy Seville story where many in the BBC and political establishment knew about the years of sexual abuse, yet kept quiet, even going so far as to cover up and enable the abuse. And while I do understand the sensitivity and wariness around pedophilia and assault conspiracies within large industries, especially like government, maybe it's worth people taking a more sober and serious look at accusations towards the government and people like Jeffrey Epstein who have very legitimate cases made against them. After all, if people are willing to cover up sexual assault on such a mass scale, it really begs the question, just what else are they willing to do for the powerful? especially for the more powerful than Weinstein. Anyways, that's all I have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit like and comment your thoughts, and I will see you next time.